Hi, everybody. Wow, look at that abrupt cutoff of the beautiful <laughs> intro music. Hi, everybody. Welcome to episode three of Transplaner RPG. We are so, so happy. Thank you so much for following, Micah Mellon. Uh, we are so, so, so happy and excited about this episode. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Um, my name is Connie. My pronouns are they, he, and she, and I am the GM and executive producer behind Transplaner. I am interested in horror, screenwriting, improv, monstrosity, diaspora, chinese Americanness, myth-making, uh, you can find me on Twitter at by Connie Chong and on Twitch and Tumblr at D and Daddy Issues. I'm gonna pass along this intro to Devin. Hi y'all, my name's Devin. My pronouns are they, them, theirs. Uh, I have a strong interest in music, languages, Dungeons and Dragons, reading books, and a lot of other things. Uh, I am playing Manaya Waidua, the seven and a half foot tall uh, half orc fighter. <laughs> and I'll pass it on to Erica. Hi, everybody. My name is Erica, she, her pronouns, and uh, I stream here on Twitch as well at Erica New Girl, and you can catch me on all social media, and I am a performer who works with uh, C on some badass stuff, so uh, I play v Scherzo, the high elf sorceress, draconic ancestry charlatan that we all know and love. Uh, I'm going to pass it on to Max. Hello, I'm Max. Uh, my pronouns are they, them. I play the Aarakocra Ranger Dewey Corp, and I, the person Max, am into cats, mutual aid, and sewing at the moment. I'm gonna pass it on to C. Cool. Oh god. Uh, my name is C. I use the them pronouns, uh, as well as these them pronouns, or Ray Ram pronouns. Uh, any gender neutral pronoun is good. Uh, I play Oka Hai, the uh, Blood Hunter Asamar. Uh, and I also did the uh, official artwork for Transplanner. Uh, you can follow me on Tumblr at uh, pi sharp or on Twitter at PiSharpArt. Uh, and my commissions are open. Yeah, that's it for me. Uh, but before we hop into the rest of the announcements, we at Transplanner want to take a moment to say again once more, fuck Wizards of the Coast. Right? Can I get a fuck Wizards of Coast in the uh, in the chat, please? Fuck Wizards uh, of Coast. Uh, we talked a little bit more about this uh, in depth during episode two, uh, so we're not going to say that much this time around. Uh, but you can use the uh, exclamation point W O T C command in chat at any time to get uh, our full statement on our stance uh, on Wizards of the Coast. Yep. Thank you for that, C. So uh, yeah. And I am just going to say, as a reminder, we play our main campaign every other Saturday. So episode four is going to come out Saturday, August 8th. What? Next month? That's so far away. Uh, at 3 p.m. CDT on Twitch. And we are also very, very excited to fully launch Professor Chung's Tabletop Workshop. If if you don't know, uh, this is a GM advice forum where yours truly will discuss a variety of topics related both to our campaign and also to running D&D and other tabletop roleplay games in general, such as my approach to world building, homebrewing, running NPCs, planning sessions, and much, much, much more. We just finished our special five-part limited series on Dake Understood last week, so thank you to all who tuned in. Uh, this series kicked off Professor Chong's with a bang, so make sure to catch our first official GM advice lecture next Saturday, August 1st at 3 p.m. CDT on Twitch. Again, Professor Chong's will stream on the Saturdays that our main campaign does not at the same time, same place. So if you're missing Transplaner, you can catch me talking about whatever. Uh, so next up, Erica, would you like to acknowledge our wonderful, wonderful donors from last yes, episode? Yes, I would. Uh, first, two things. First off, I've been asked to do this as V. But second of all, if you were at Max's birthday party last week, we played TKO and I just have this shirt oh. that was made by the cast <laughs> with a bottle of mayo chip and with the, the world think, only thinks of me as a monster but I am a hero so uh, thanks for whoever put that shirt together while we were playing that game and uh, happy birthday Max okay alright here we go before we begin an acknowledgement of everyone who put down deposits for our sessions the last, last time uh, from May 19 Aura Vera Lex Fazman91 and Marty Soul. Thank you so much for your opportunity and overwhelming generosity and support. Uh, speaking of donations, aka deposits, we are continuing a special <laughs> reward system for giving in episode three. For every $15 we receive collectively, a star will light up on the overlay. 
and the party will get one point of collective inspiration that any PC can spend at any time. If we reach our session goal of $120 or 8 stars, one for each of the eight gods of Endake, then the constellation will become complete and the grand prize is unlocked. Ooh. The grand prize is activating a player-related backstory B-plot. Connie has worked with each player to determine what this could look like. Connie will roll a d4 and whosoever name comes up will have their B-plot activated as soon as possible. If we don't reach our goal of $120 this session, the counter will reset for episode 4, but the party will get to keep all collective inspiration that isn't spent, which you can see we currently have two. Exactly. And the black stars on some of the players' overlays are their individual inspiration, which I've house ruled they can stack up to three. Uh, so thank you so much for that, Erica slash V. Uh, next, let's go into the recap of episode two. Max, why don't you take that away? So last time on Transplaner, the stars are gone, the gods are gone, the world has been plunged into an unnatural darkness. Uh, during a post-battle, postpartum chat with the Copper Stewards, uh, the gang learns that the true purpose of the cult to protect the last of the dragons, aren't they extinct? Um, <laughs> this order is dedicated to protecting MRI, the last of the Copper Dragons. Um, when the team turns to Delapathy Saeed for answers, he reveals that none of the things that they've heard about him are true, He's actually just a great rumor-spreading bard, but he makes his stories from a real person, Dr. Aluso, um, who is likely to have the answers to everyone's questions. The catch is he lives 40 days away, 40 days hike away in the Oakland Chasm. So the, um, after escorting Dalapathy home to his husband and Adolon party, trying to pull a poorly planned con, the, and staying <laughs> uh, staying the night, the team ties up some loose ends, Manaya with her fellow sailors, and Oka with their mercenary band. And they have just met up again, and are ready to embark on a road trip that's sure to test their skills and building relationships. Oh, Budding relationships. yes. Will Connie finally get her TPK? We will find out during this episode of Transplaner. And if you would like a written recap of episode one, if you missed episode one, that's totally fine. And episode two, just type exclamation point recap. It will link you to a Google Doc that has a page long recap of each episode. Wonderful resource. Oh, my cat is here. Hello, Mr. Bobo Man. <laughs> uh, please, <laughs> the middle of streaming. <laughs> Mr. Bobo. Uh, Let him on the camera. Let him on. He Let wants him. to be a star. He wants to be a star. He's definitely fluffy enough. Uh, so, Devin, finally, why don't you tell us what this title of this episode's all about? Yeah, so uh, the title of episode three is uh, Like God's Hands Off the Sun. Uh, it's from the poem It Singing Over the Glassfield Comes from the Malevol Malevolent Volume by Justin Philip Reed. Uh, the whole verse, including our clip that we used for the title, reads, The crowman slides his cloak off the tall spire like a god's like God's hands off the sun, and it's morning. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't know the malevolent volume by Justin Philip Reed or Justin Philip Reed, check him out. He is a queer black poet. Contemporary poetry, so, so good. I cannot recommend him enough. And the Malevolent Volume, as well as Indecency, uh, were both written by him. Uh, and you can check out his work on coffeehousepress.org, just plugging my old internship uh, uh, place. So yeah, let's get right into episode three. Without further ado, let's get started. <clears throat> God will settle in. Settle into this, this wonderful world of ours. <clears throat> A horn-sick juggernaut, horse-long torso, hooves like thunder, eyes like the sun. The freedom of running, the freedom of open field. In the darkness and solitude of her patchwork tent, a half-orc woman carefully unfurls the scroll that was handed to her a mere handful of moments ago. Mercy, the leader of the mercenary group, the Hounds of Mercy, reads the contents of the scroll, her eyebrows knitting denser and denser until she lowers the parchment, takes a deep breath, and mutters out loud to no one. Oka, what the fuck? 
Uh, and now, several hundred feet away from Ujad, this shanty town that Mercy is squatting in, we find Oka uh, traveling across the arid flatlands of northern Talmud, accompanied, of course, by the rest of their party. The jagged peaks of the God Spine mountain range looms far to the south, their distant heights piercing the soft underbelly of the now sunless sky. Miles and miles of parched shrublands, open horizons, and sprawling dunes of red hills stretches out before you. Dr. Hitsaguten Oluso, your charge is 40 days away. You better start walking. So before we get into a very fun travel montage that's going to span 40 days, very biblical of me, I might say, uh, what do the four, what do the four of you, that's loud, I'm going to lower that, uh, what do the four of you say to each other on the eve of your departure into this uncertain journey? I think Dewey's spending some alone time, actually. Not so much conversing well. with them because he will have time to do that in the coming 40 days. V is going to be in a space to try to watch like the entire party as much as possible, but then also like looking around like she is purposefully like and letting out large sighs every once in a while because she really wants to do something fun and exciting but she realizes it's probably not a good time to maybe do something fun and exciting so she is she's bored <laughs> and she's making she's performing boredom for everybody while also keeping a watchful eye mm -hmm. Uh, I think Oka, similarly uh, to Manaya and Dewey, is keeping their distance a little bit, but upon hearing V's uh, 14th sigh of the evening, uh, they're gonna like turn a little bit, you know? Like, you really have gotta get used to the cactuses. It's just sand. It's just fucking sand and dirt, all right? It's just sand and dirt. And that's all it is. You get used to it after a while, okay? By day three, you're gonna be fine. Okay, but I'm a people person. I like to be around people. So much more exciting things happen. And can't we, this is there nothing we can take to like hurry this trip along? Do we not have, do we have to walk so far? Unless you can find us a stable. It's a, it's a long walk. Not one I haven't made before, though. We can stop in some fun spots if you want. Maybe but get killed by all the monsters that are running around. I don't really think this is a good time to uh, sightsee. Not that there's anything up here to see anyway. Dewey's calling out in the distance. I think the, the flora is pretty interesting. I, I'm excited to see the, the variety of cacti. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the last time I saw a cacti, I saw it a little too close and personal, so I, I will keep my distance from cacti this time. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and so your bantering persists as you trek across, you know, the, the dry, flat, red earth of the Badlands in northern Talmud. Uh, so Let's, let's play through the first week. For folks who don't know, slash I think this is a good reminder, uh, months work differently in Endake. It's not like seven days a week, it's eight days a week. And each month is 40 days uh, or five, five weeks. Yes, because five times eight is 40. There we go. Uh, so yeah, so when I'm like talking about like the weeks past, like, you know, it's like day, day 12, et cetera. Like that's, that's the sort of numerology to keep in mind. Uh, so as the four of you walk, I'm going to just very quickly narrate and say that six days pass. So why don't the four of you just sort of describe to me like how these days pass as you start to settle into an uneasy routine of setting up camp, let's say, setting up watch, packing up camp in the morning and setting out. So how, describe to me like what the cadence of this is, what the rhythm feels like. Uh. I 
I think I think a suggestion that Oka might have is that they walk uh, for several hours uh, in the dawn and then several hours in the dusk uh, to like take camp or shorter rest uh, in the mid afternoon and it, and in the darkest parts of the night uh, when it's number one too hot and then number one too dark to see by. Right, because I think there's a lot gone. of yeah. I think there's a lot of uh, Oka also casting light constantly all the time yeah definitely that's a really useful cantrip to know now right who says light is useless no no one does except for maybe some people uh so six days pass right uh and the four of you take this routine you travel you know in the dawn you travel in the dusk you're very careful during the day you're very careful at night uh so basically you know all day you sort of walk and walk and walk, right? And you pass many shanty towns actually during this this first six days of your travel, similar to Ujad, you know, a patchwork collection of tents and shacks. Uh, and you sort of nod wordlessly to the handful of other uh, travelers that you sort of meet along this flat stretch of road uh, that hugs the god spine to the south. And at night, of course, you set up camp, you swaddle up in furs and coats, right, to ward off the bitter, plunging, starless cold of the wintry night. And you also occasionally hear the screaming of strange creatures in the distance, and you set a wary, nervous watch schedule, let's say, keeping one hand on the hilt of your weapon at all times. So, in the middle of the day, on the sixth day, uh, your party is trekking through a flat, open plateau, all right, a few scrubs, you know, dotting the horizon, a few baobab trees, spiny ocotillos. Baobab trees sort of look like this and they fan out up top. Uh, but other than that, nothing, nothing much, you know, aside from an outcropping of rock, let's say, about 50 feet to your, to your east. All in all, an unremarkable day until, uh, 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 make a perception check. Everyone? First, yes, everybody. First time using my new dice. Let's yeah. hope it's not a low roller, first Erica. Roll. <laughs> That yeah. 20, oh my fuck. Oh. Shut the fuck up. Shut up. Oh my god. That's oh, crazy. Oh, okay. That makes one of us. So V got a nat 20 for the first time in her life. What about the rest of you? I got a 21. Oh my god. Okay, 21. Okay. A gentleman's eight. A gentleman's eight. Dewey. We got a seven. Seven. Yeah. Seven from Dewey. Okay, Dewey and Oka. Uh, the two of you notice that it's getting it's getting darker for some reason. Maybe there are just some clouds passing over the sun, and you you forget that the sun doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> uh, Devin, uh, Manaya, and V. The two of you notice something interesting. Not only is it getting dimmer, kind of suddenly in the middle of the day, uh, the, the sky is sunless, but there's this sort of like ever-present light coming from everywhere and nowhere at once. Um, the, the light around you seems to dim, right? Like someone is, is sliding down the faders on a dimmer. And then the temperature just kind of drops. Uh, and moments later, a chill wind seems to pick up. And you, uh, Manaya, notice dense, thick clouds gathering in the sky. And because you got it 21, right? That's pretty high. So I'm gonna let you also notice that the ground seems to tremble just a little bit. It's nothing like the earthquake that hit you in the butte, right, with the Copper Stewards, but it's, ve it's very subtle and seems to come from deep within the earth. If you're a perception check or even a number lower, even a 20, you probably wouldn't have felt it. Uh, and the winds continue to pick up, right? Are you gonna uh, say anything? Go ahead. Yes, okay, so we're in the desert. Are yes. we near the mountains? Is there Are there any hills nearby? Oh uh, yeah, there's that outcropping of rock I mentioned earlier. Okay. It's like, pretty yep. big, it's about like 50 feet away. Yep. Are there any points that like curve out that we could, that we would go under? Or would be able to go under? Yeah, with a 21 perception it seems to have a lot of nooks and crannies, and maybe even like a few okay. en entrances, perhaps. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so go ahead. Yeah, Manai's gonna turn to the party, uh, and she's gonna say, Winds are changing. It looks, feels big. We need cover. Don't go under anything. Let's get to that outcropping. That's very smart, actually, Manai. I'm going to give you a point of inspiration for that. I really oh, like your fast you. decision making. I think it's very in character. Uh, and I'm going to keep talking and stalling until I find the next star. There we go. Boom. Uh, so, <laughs> Manaya, you turn to your party, you tell them to move. What did that rest of you, how did the rest of you respond? Oka kind of uh, stubbornly squints up at the sky for a little while, and they're like, it's always like this, right? It's always trust, gray, like, right? Trust what? the sailor. 
I know the winds. You also did just say, don't go under anything, and you suggested that we go under an outcrop? Uh, no, 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 up to the side of the... Look, follow me! <laughs> uh, do He's you follow? Like, I trust a giant... I trust giant woman. Never been wrong yet. <laughs> Never been wrong before. Okay, so the three of you follow Manaya to this outcropping of rock 50 feet away, and as you sort of like hustle hustle your way over, now even those of you with very low perception uh, rolls, you notice that the winds are picking up, right? And Oka and Dewey, you notice that, yeah, it's getting dimmer because clouds are condensing in the sky, and then it begins to snow? A uh, fast, thick violent flurries of snow and hail begin to buffet your party, right? Obscuring your vision and sort of threatening to blow hats off heads and packs off of shoulders. Your teeth begin to chatter and breath comes out immediately in thick ghostly clouds. It's almost as cold as the desert night, which is saying a lot. Um, and if you, don't, if you don't get to that cover soon, which is now maybe like you're halfway there, 25 feet away, you will very likely get hypothermia or worse. What do you do? Is the ground still shaking? You mentioned it was trembling a little bit earlier. Yeah, it continues to tremble just a little, but only you seem to be a able little. to feel it, Manaya, with your high perception. It's very subtle, which is kind of odd. Fuck it, let's take the chance. We're going under the outcropping. Okay, all of you are ducking underneath the outcropping. Why don't you just make a general uh, dexterity check for me? To sort of like weave your way through the hail, not, you know. 17. 17 from Oka. Eleven. Eleven from V. Seven. S seven from Dewey. <laughs> Ten. Ten. Ten from Anaya. Okay, uh, Oka, you are able to you like do like a baseball skid like underneath the outcropping, and you like you dodge the worst of the hail. <laughs> um, Dewey. And Manaya, the two of you get buffeted a little, but you get blown about. You know, it's hard. You maybe trip and stumble and fall, but you help help yourself. You help each other up, and you you hide underneath. Um, and Oka, with your high roll, you're able to sort of usher and gesture for everyone to hide underneath the outcropping. And because of your fast decision making, Manaya, you are able to weather the worst of this blizzard uh and you sort of watch the rest of the wind and the snow gust and howl and scream past um the outcropping that you're huddling underneath um and you, you sort of like bundled up let's say like you've pulled out your furs and you're bundling up um and uh are you just you got to try to wait wait out this blizzard uh uh i would like to actually uh take out my dagger oh wait no uh i only have one right weapon uh, I'll take out my my dueling bow blade, okay. uh, and I'll just kind of like drag it across the top of my knuckles. Uh, and I would like to activate my uh, my crimson right damage so that my sword lights on fire. Oh, cool! I like that. Yeah. Why don't you have a point of inspiration for that as well? I le I really like that move. So why don't you lose some HP and describe to me what it looks like as your sword lights up? Uh, the the blood itself actually uh, just like flows right into the sword, uh, and then the the like liquid itself uh, ignites uh, with a little puff of breath from Oka. They go, <laughs> and it goes. Cool, <laughs> very cool. I really, really like that. Uh, so oh, yeah, oh. the okay. the your sword ignites. You you breathe out like you're uh, a fire a fire breather, uh, and then <laughs> your sword ignites, and you. The four of you immediately feel the warmth from this. Uh, and as the four of you huddle, this blizzard churns for five minutes. Ten. Go ahead, Manaya. I'm, I'm going to keep an eye above us at the outcropping because sure the like, ground was shaking. If mm, it's an earthquake, it's going gonna, it's gonna to fall. Totally. Manaya, why don't you roll survival for that? As you do that, the blizzard continues to churn and scream and howl, and it gets worse and worse and thicker and thicker. You can't see like farther than ten feet out in front of you. That's how thick it becomes. And even though the outcropping offers some shelter, it's not a lot. And the fire, thankfully, because it's magical, doesn't go out. Uh, but it does. The flames do whip from the wind. Manaya, what did you get? Eleven for survival. Eleven for survival. Uh, that's sufficient enough to see that it, it's not no cracks form you know the outcropping it doesn't seem in danger of collapsing on you but it does <laughs> it does shake a little bit which worries you a little but it doesn't seem to be in danger of, of of crumbling that's all you can really tell with an 11 and with an 11 you can also tell uh this uh blizzards don't happen in deserts like this especially not in the middle of the day this is extremely weird 
Uh, so maybe like an hour passes with the blizzard churning. Oka? Uh, I think Oka says something like that. Uh, they like, cro- like you know, cross their arms with their swords still like uh, moving a little bit. Uh, and they say, I lived out here for five fucking years. There's no fucking blizzards in the desert. Yeah, this is really weird. Oka, you would know that this is this is really, really weird. And is probably related to whatever, you know, is going on with the stars. <laughs> Just the educated guest could probably make that decision. Uh, so the, the four of you weather the rest of the storm. Uh, an hour, maybe an hour and a half passes. The storm eventually dies down. The blizzard eventually dies down. And the four of you sort of tentatively peek your heads out. You see like a thick thick, you know, like, a uh, coating of snow on the ground. It's left, like, almost a foot uh, on the on the ground around you. And as you look around, you notice that it just seems to be a, a particular, like, big circle of snow. Almost like clouds happened right above where you were. Poof. Because you see that the snow doesn't extend past uh, this particular perimeter. Of maybe, let's um. say, a couple acres across? I'm gonna cast Mage Hand and just like scoop up some of the snow and bring it closer to us to look at and stuff. Okay, you scoop up the snow to examine it. Your mage, your ghostly, a ghostly hand appears and scoops up some snow and and floats over to you under the outcropping and you look at it. How are you examining the snow? Oka's gonna eat some of it. Okay. For sure. Oka, roll investigation. With my mouth. With your mouth. Roll investigation (laughs) with your mouth. Ah! (laughs) Uh, uh, unnatural 20. Unnatural 20. It tastes like snow. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, I have it's some snow. Experience. It's... I have some experience with poisons and corrosive materials because of my bonded bloodletting. It is, uh, uh it is not poisoned. Okay. It's, it's normal snow. Yeah, it seems to be normal snow. It's uh, normal. I let my mage end just dissipate and the snow falls on the ground. Yep. Yep. It kicks it a little. Do we go... Is there still trembling? Is there still stuff like that happening? Nope. Uh, nope. There's no more trembling left. It just seems like it's it's past. Whatever this phenomenon was, It it's past. What was that, Devin? If we're done playing in the snow, we really should get going. We've lost a good amount of time from the storm. Okay, Manaya, you're trying to pass on Dewey. What what were you trying to do? Um, can I see if the snow is melting where it's touching the ground? I won't even let you make a perception roll for that. It does seem to be like melting because the ground is hot, <laughs> but the snow is cold. So it, it left like about a foot, but before your very eyes, it seems to be seeping into the ground, into the soil, softening this hard, cracked earth. Oka's gonna pack some of it into their water skin. Oh, that's <laughs> smart. Just to fill it back up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cool. Cool. yeah, that's yeah. smart. Yeah, so you all, you're all like, okay. Uh, you, fill, you fill up your water skins with this weird snow and kind of nervously you heed Manaya's words and you keep moving. Okay, great. Uh, uh, as we're... Sorry, as we're walking, uh, can I use my Hunter's Bane to make an intelligence check to re- try to recall any information about monsters that bring environmental... Uh, effects. Yeah, why don't you roll intelligence for that? As you, like, sort of trek through this, like, snow that is melting as you move through it, right? So by the time you reach the edge of the strange sudden snow field, it's already, like, sunk almost, like, halfway down because of how hot the earth is. Oka, what did you get? A 19. A, a 19! Um, you do know of certain magical beasts that are so powerful that their very presence can shape the environment around them. Um, the extinct dragons are an example of such beasts, but you know that such creatures would be, first of all, extremely powerful. Only the most powerful class of beasts have environmental effects, lair effects, right? Um, that would affect the physical world around them. And second of all, this seems like a very sudden like onset, and then it just sort of ended. You know that any magical beast that brings this sort of environmental hazard would stay. Like if they move into an area, then the, you know, the world around them would become shaped by their presence. 
So unless this was but like a flyover by like a, a blizzard naga or something, it'd be very, mm-hmm. very weird for this to just boom, boom, and disappear. Very likely mm-hmm. not caused by a beast based on your 19. Cool. Yeah. Okay, uh, so moving on, the four of you travel for the rest of the day. Nothing else so remarkable or to that degree happens. You set up camp, you warily watch, but you continue moving. Uh, you did get fir- a hydrate uh, redemption. Hi- Everybody hide. Oh, we got a hydrate yeah. redemption? We gotta take a sip, babes. Mm. Nice Thank icy you, snow water. Thank you for that. <laughs> Uh, so the first week of your travels passes like this, right? Strange little anomalies. The, the sky is starless at night and sunless during the day. You notice, you know, as you're walking, a few cacti, baobab trees look wilted for no reason, you know? And you notice that as you're, as you're walking along, the tra- travelers look extremely guarded. And you notice a lot of them, especially as the days go by, seem to be traveling with cell swords, bodyguards that they've hired to protect them. Their blades slick with blood sort of leering at you as they pass. Uh, and you sort of, the four of you sort of enter the second week of your travels, right? Uh, the second batch of eight days with some trepidation and determination to get to the end of this journey. And, uh, you know, as you encounter more and more folks, you notice uh, that they mostly seem to be travelers either from the commune of Morose, based on the, the fact that they're swaddled up in furs and sort of like the paints that are on their face, um, to the from the north going into Talmud and vice versa, where travelers from Talmud sort of, you know, wrapped up uh, in, in protective gear to protect them from, from, from the heat, move, moving up to Morose for some reason. Uh, and perhaps you feel relieved by this crush of people and you feel less alone, or perhaps you feel unsettled. After all, Oka, you in particular will notice, because you've been out here for five years, that these aren't the merry-faced voyagers that you're used to on desert highways. Or even like the, you know, band of like uh, thrill-seeking bards who just sort of roam around the desert, you know, singing. None of these. The majority of these folks, instead of merchants, adventurers, bards, etc., the majority of these folk are refugees. They all seem to be displaced from various uh, natural and unnatural disasters that have either destroyed their homes by the look of sadness on their faces, or they're fleeing from the nameless night terrors that are plaguing their village for one reason or another. And you know this because your party encounters a few travelers of note, right? A few people. One of them you encounter on your ninth day of travel. She is a tiefling woman, and she is traveling with her dragonborn child from the Republic of Talmud. The two of them are journeying to the commune to stay with their extended family. This music's a little too intense for this. Uh, To sort of stay with their extended family after their hamlet was destroyed, they tell you, by a sudden sinkhole. Uh, The mother, sort of this tiefling woman, stops to ask your party, her low kind of, her voice kind of low and embarrassed, uh, if she could, could I, uh, please have a a few of your rations? Ours was ruined by this, uh, sudden deluge of rain? The sudden rainstorm in the middle of, of the Badlands? So if you have some rations to spare, my child and I would really appreciate it. How does your party respond? Of, of course. Start through, yeah, starts going through our rations. Great. Um, Naya and Dewey, the two of you, dig through your rations. You, you hand you hand this tiefling woman a few like cans of beans and whatnot. She goes, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I I feel really embarrassed by taking this. Uh, where are the four of you headed? We're on our way to the chasm. The chasm? Have you, mm-hmm. Have you heard any news <sighs> from that region? No, we're we're not going there. We're moving kind of parallel to it, though. I suppose we're going to stay with my mom in in the commune. Our village was taken by a sinkhole. I I do bring news from Talmud, though. I hear of disturbances in the capital. You know, ever since <sighs> Yudabathi bless us, ever since the vanishing, things have been so hard and so strange. No one knows what's going on. The consuls are here, and, you know, all the senators are in a flurry. But no no one can explain what's happening. You know, my local priest, he said to just keep praying to Yudabati, but I know that he, he can't reach them. Why are the four of you headed to the chasm? It's dangerous out there, even more dangerous than the Badlands. As much as we would love to return 
a story, one story with another. We are on some uh, personal business. I understand. But, but I will tell you this. Though you may not be able to see them, you should believe in hope. Thank you. Uh, she kind of looks at you. Why don't you roll persuasion with advantage? Because I like yeah. that touch. Fifteen. Okay, yeah, that's that's respectable. Uh, the tiefling woman just sort of goes, <sighs> "Thank you." It's, I know it's barely been a week since the vanishing, but it feels like people are already losing hope about our gods. It's nice to see folk like you carrying the torch. Isn't that right, <laughs> Bobe? And she sort of like pats the head of her of her child, who's maybe like nine or ten, this dragonborn kid. And the dragonborn kid, she's like a rad, red dragonborn. She just sort of lets out a puff of like fire from her nostrils. She's like clinging onto her mom's, you know, like dress. So it looks at the four of you kind of warily. She goes, well, thank you so much for the rations. We better get going. Of course. Safe travels. Thank you. And you as well. May Yudabati bless you. Protect you. She sort of inclines her head. Uh, and she moves on. That was really sweet, y'all. Aww. Uh, so... Uh... Go ahead. Uh, as we also start to walk away, Oka kind of sidles up beside Manaya. Uh, and they, like, fold their arms over their chest. Do you really think that? Think what? Like, glance at the sky. You really think that they're still up there? Ask me when we get to the chasm. I'll have your answer then. Fine. I don't forget, though. Hope it is a dangerous thing, Manaya. Hope is a very dangerous thing. Noka moves off a little bit. Interesting. I like that exchange. Why don't the two of you both take a point of inspiration for that? Uh, and that is the cap for both of you, I'm pretty sure. In terms of inspiration you can stack up on. Uh, so the your party continues moving and, you know, doing your routine, settling into it, getting to know each of you, uh, each other better and better as your days go by. So why don't you describe to me as the days pass one day, another day, and another day until it's your 16th day of travel, right? Why don't the four of you tell me about um, uh how how it feels like internally how your character is thinking and feeling about traveling with everyone else have you been opening up have you been sort of staying reticent tell me tell me about your internal dialogue so i want to hear from a v first yeah uh v has been keeping a distance and like noticeably like watches what everyone else is doing inside she is feeling like not part of she's this is like she's going through some stuff like just passing all these travelers and not thinking about ripping any of them off <laughs> uh has been a change of heart for me um and so there's there's something brewing in her like she wants to say something but i don't think she's quite there yet mm. mm -hmm. uh what about you oka uh, Oka is a little bit like, uh, they're very focused most of the time, uh, but if someone gets them talking, they'll really just kind of like keep going a little bit. Like they're like, oh, right. I remember how to talk and they'll be like, oh yeah, right over there was the one time that I found this da 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 But it never extends any deeper than that. And they're very clear that it never extends deeper than that. Like, there's stories about them, or stories about things that they've done, or stories about things that they've heard, but they're never about them. And they never ask, either. Mm. Mm -hmm. How about Dewey? Um, I feel like Dewey's also kind of feeling the way V is. Um, like, to him, it's kind of mm, like an information gathering trip. Um, he's there always observing, um, he's glad for these people who are keeping him safe, 
uh, super capable. Um, but yeah, he's willing to share the information he knows, but he doesn't really feel the need to open up. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay, and finally, last but not least, Manaya, how are you feeling? So Manaya is a very practical person who has spent much of her life on ships and traveling and is very used to downtime. Um, and so, like, if Oka points a direction that we need to go, she'll be the first person to basically lead the charge as soon as she knows where she's going. Uh, but she knows and values uh, small talk, basically, uh, keeping the situation as light as it can without making light of a bad situation, if that makes sense. Mm. So I think at least once a day, she would come to each member of the party and just strike up small talk. I love and it's that. Something, something light, something small, nothing like, so, uh, are your parents dead? No, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, no, none of that, but... Cool. Aren't all our parents dead? Isn't that how D&D works? Oof. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, so, Manaya, actually, I really, really like what you said about Manaya trying to strike up small talk. So, I would like, Devin, you, as Manaya, to pick one other character that you're trying to strike up small talk with on the, the let's say, the morning when you're packing up camp, right? The morning <laughs> of, of the 16th day of travel. Just, just pick a character. Pick someone else. So, uh, Kadu, was it? That's correct. Uh, you can call me Dewey. Dewey, yes. If it's easier. Forgive me if, if I'm, uh, being too forward about this, but you look Wuhan. Are you from the Southern Islands? Uh, I spend most of my time around the research lab, the URL. Oh. Um, or I did. Not so much anymore. Ah, research Aaron. trip. Oh, yes, I'm I'm from the... I'm not from Awanui, but I'm, I'm on that island there. I live on the coast. Lived. Yeah. Uh, as the two of you are sort of talking to each other, Oka and V, the two of you are also, like, packing up camp, right? Let's say on the other side of the campfire, and you sort of, like, overhear this. Um, Oka, roll a d100 for me. Okay. What's going on? Uh, 13. Okay. Uh, Oka, as this is happening, uh, you, you hear, you hear a little chirp, 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 chirp. Chirp, 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 chirp. I look in my backpack. Yeah. Uh, and you see sort of s sitting at the bottom of your backpack, it's belly very, oh, okay. very large and engorged on your rations, is some sort of desert mouse. You motherfucker! <laughs> you <laughs> close the bag! I close the bag! <laughs> uh, v, you hear the squeaking, and you hear squeak, 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 and you hear Oka go, you motherfucker, and then the squeaking <laughs> stops. <laughs> are you, are you okay, Oka? What, uh, what you got in the bag there? What do I have in the bag? My rations. I have my rations in my bag. Oka looks a little deranged. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, you seem a little on edge for having food inside your bag. What do you need? Is this a moment? Do you need help? Is there are this a reaching out moment? Is, are you coming up? That you, do you need something, friend? You seem not right. <sighs> I'll need to stop in the next town real fast. <laughs> I don't particularly like to eat mice, but I'm not above it. Oh, uh, you hear a squeak, 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 squeak <laughs> from, inside, from inside the back. <laughs> Do I need to read your thoughts? Just say, do you have a mouse in there? You have not... Speak words that make sense to me. Uh, okay, fine. Okay, fine. I accidentally left my pack open like I'm fucking three years old and don't know how to tie a knot, 
And now there's a goddamn mouse that ate all my goddamn food, okay? And it's in here. It's in here. Would you like help getting rid of it if it's in there, if it's still with your food? Well, no, all my food's gone. It's gonna be my food now. Okay, you enjoy desert mouse. That sounds delicious. Uh, V, make a dis dexterity save. Oh, God. <laughs> Ooh, uh, 21. Uh, you hear as uh, you're kind of you're a little distracted, you know, Amanaya and Dewey, you're also talking, so you're a little distracted. Uh, but V, your ear, your big elven ear perks up as you hear a like uh, get louder and louder. Uh, and you, you sort of out of instinct just dive, dive to the right as a, a zebra, uh, sort of like pummels, pummels past. You know, it sort of tramples over your tent, and uh, it's, it's it has a saddle on, you know, and a bridle, but there's no rider on it. And it's sort of like also carrying like a cart. A cart is hitched to it. And you sort of hear like moments later, the zebra like just sort of runs past you, tramples over your tent, and like the, the cart just sort of screeches to a halt as the zebra suddenly stops and turns and looks at your party, sort of snorts and starts to paw the ground. Uh, and behind you hear a, uh... Uh, and you see, you see a, uh, uh, you see a dwarven man running, very like red faced, uh, like moments like chasing after the zebra. And he he's dressed kind, of, he's a little portly. He's very clean shaven, especially for a dwarf. Uh, and he he's like running. He's like dressed in, in in clothes that are pretty emblematic of the Republic of Talmud, but a pretty pretty well dressed man. Actually, he has like some silk on. He has like some jewels embedded in his robe. He goes, oh, excuse me, stripes, stop, bad zebra, bad, stop. Uh, I'm so, I'm I'm so sure sorry. I'm nab the rain as fast as possible. Okay, roll. So that the zebra doesn't take over. Roll, roll animal handling. Uh, Manaya, Dewey, V, are you, are you responding in a particular way? Ooh. I'm going to use one of my inspirations. Sounds good. I'm going to get rid uh, of that for you. What if uh, oh! I try to stop? Sorry. Go for it. What did you get, Oga? Uh, uh, a 12. A 12. Okay, uh, I'm going to resolve that in a second. Right. V, what do you say? Uh, I would like to go to the the dwarf coming up and stop and like try to relax him. Uh, you say he looks pretty well-to-do, right? Oh, yeah, he looks pretty well-to-do. <laughs> I might try to rob him. <laughs> okay, uh, V, you go up to this dwarf and he goes, Oh, I, I'm so sorry about my zebra. She's just, she spooks easy. Saw a cactus. Thought it was a monster. We've run into a few monsters at this point. The world's gone to shit, don't you think? Uh, Uka, with your 12, you are able to grab the reins. The zebra looks angry, but it allows you to take the reins. Uh, its eyes look kind of wild. Uh, and V, as you approach this man, how are you trying to uh, rob him? <laughs> Well, I'm gonna be like, stop, 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 just relax it, and then I'm like, he, I'm assuming uh, he's probably a little winded from all this running, so I'm like, helping him, just like, just breathe, relax, you just uh, take deep breaths, and like, while I'm doing that, I'm like, you know, I'm close, I'm, I, I'm handsy, I'm uh -huh. handsy on him, <laughs> uh -huh. and uh, reach behind and see what I can grab. <laughs> he goes, oh, uh, roll, roll sleight of hand, let's say contesting his uh, perception. 20. Yeah, that natural. is more than sufficient. You grab, you grab like a, a, a pouch, it feels, that's sort of strapped to the back and it feels heavy. And you're able to sort of like pass it behind your own back, maybe slip it into your pocket. Maybe you'll, you can examine this later, right? Yep. Uh, yep. So you grab this pouch and he goes, oh, thank you. Thank you for calming me down. I, I'm prone to anxiety. Uh, you there, young person, looks at you, Oka. Thank you so much for grabbing Stripes' reins. Do you think you could bring, bring her back to me? You can't walk ten feet? Uh, I suppose I could. Thank you. Uh, and this man steps forward and he, he sort of waddles over uh, to where Stripes is and sort of goes, There, there, old girl, there, there. Pats the zebra's neck and says, Oh, I, this is so embarrassing. I haven't even introduced myself. I appreciate it. Uh, my name is Liao, uh, Liao Kumar. I'm a merchant from Dabathati. And you would know Dabathati as the capital of the Republic. I'm actually, I'm on my way to the court with stripes here, uh, but damn, damn girl got spooked by a cactus. Listen, you're, four of you aren't on your way to the capital, are you? 
<laughs> no, 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 no. Quite the opposite direction, actually. Oh, good. I just got out in time, if you ask me. Oh? What's going on? What? Haven't you heard? About no. the riots? Riots? Yeah. I had heard the there was... Rioting. The what? What was that? What did you say? I could hear you. Sorry, I'm a little... What did I... you say? I had heard that the government was up in arms, but the people rioting? Yes! Especially the miners! The miners are going crazy! Saw one of them with my own eyes! I saw one of them take out some other poor guy's eye with an axe! Pickaxe! Bloody, terrible, gruesome stuff! People getting injured! I know. Few people got- I, I heard of! Few people got killed! Getting trampled! <laughs> Apparently, they're just angry, you know, about the state of things generally. And he sort of gestures at the sunless sky. I think that's kind of an overreaction, if you ask me. I mean, I'm angry about what's going on, and I haven't killed anyone. You know, what with Yudabathi not responding to our priests and all that, I get it, but still, it was terrible. Riots have been hitting the mines almost every night since the Cataclysm. You know, Raheem's trying his damn best, but I don't know if it'll be enough. Just, just stay away from Dabathati if you know what's good for you. Whole city's going to the dogs. We'll be sure to steer clear. Steer clear. Good. Say the, the four of you don't happen to be cell swords, right? Oh, well... We're out of commission okay. right now, unfortunately. We're on business. Damn it. I tried to save some money, skimped out on hiring a bodyguard, but we've had a few close calls already, haven't we, Stripes? Uh, I know you're out of commission, but would one of you like to escort me to the court? I could pay a handsome fee. Yeah. Look, I even have the um, upfront deposit, and he reaches behind his back and goes, "What? What?" The? And he sort of like does like a little pat, pat down. He goes, "What? Where did stripes?" Sort of blames his zebra, who just sort of snorts and paws the ground. Um, hey, out of character geography question. Yes. I know. At some point, we have to go south, mm -hmm. following the god spine, mm -hmm. and the and the commune is north. Yes. But where we are, would it still technically be on our way to take this man, like... Oh, no, he said he was going to the bit. court, which is oh, way the court. out. Raven, the other way. Right, right, right. The complete right. other way, yeah. Sorry. Yep. Commune, no, court. Yeah, it's similar. Yeah. Aussies, yep. Um, so it would be a complete, complete one. Yeah. Um, so in this conversation, V has turned her back to the conversation because she is so... She, she's thinking about all that potential money for a potentially easy gig, and she's like chewing on her own fingers because she's so like, I want that money, so. But then when he's like, he's not found his pack, I'm like also a little bit laughing, but also a little bit still biting my finger. He goes, oh, you know what, Never mind. Never mind. Stripes and I have made it this far, we'll be fine, you know. We find our dead bodies on your way back though. Give me a nice burial, won't you? Of course. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> Gallows humor, my good, my good friend. It's the only thing that'll get us through these dark times. Well, I appreciate you calming down my zebra. I'm sorry about trampling over your tent. Uh, here, have a gold piece for your for your troubles. And he sort of reaches into his uh, other pocket and sort of flicks, flicks, uh, Oka flicks you a, a gold, a gold piece. And Oka, you take it. He goes, all right, I better be on my way now. <laughs> it, it, it seems Immediately. Real. He goes, ah, oh, uh, you sell swords, such misers. Just be careful, don't go to the capital, okay? Riots. People are going crazy. I'm the Alkumar. Good night. Uh, good day. Uh, he takes he takes the zebra and he, he begins to walk 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 stripes away. Uh, as soon as he's out of earshot, uh Oka uh makes like a face, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, that's been a long time coming. The miners have been talking about rising up for years now. Oh? I spent some time down there when I was a little bit uh, short on cash before I joined the Hounds, so. Mm -hmm. But you also do know- It's a long time coming. So based on your background, Oka, you would also know that the miners were talking about rising up, but based on Liao's description of the uprisings, the violence seemed to be kind of indiscriminate. So it would be mm -hmm. strange that they would also attack fellow peasants. Or commoners, mm -hmm. you know, that would be very out of character for them. Mm -hmm. Based on this guy's, you know, what he said, you can take take it at face value or not. Uh huh. 
I think uh, Oka says what they say confidently, uh, and then kind of like worries their lip a little bit, you know, like chew it a little. Mm-hmm. Like think thinking that over. Mm-hmm. But they don't say anything more. Cool. As soon as we're out of earshot of both the dwarf and the zebra, Manaya's gonna turn to V and say, How much? Uh, v pulls out the pouch and, <laughs> and does an investigation. Okay. Yeah, V, you don't have to investigate. You open up the pouch and it is filled with glittering uncut gems. Uh, just on a bit, if you cut them, you know, if you process these gems, they will be worth anywhere from like 50 to 200 gold. It's hard to tell, but it's sure. it's a lot. There's a lot of money in this pouch. He was That's like, oh, enough for a zebra of our own. <laughs> That's enough for a zebra of your own. That's a lot of money, yeah. But it's uncut right now, so if you just sold the pouch uncut, unprocessed, you'd probably only be able to fetch 30 gold tops. Hmm. And it's I also enough to make up for the rations we lost. More than enough, for sure, 30 gold. Yeah, but you would want to find like a jeweler, you know, or someone who would be able to process and cut cut the gems. A yes, Dewey? Yeah. Can I still see the merchant? Yeah, he's like, he's, 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 he, the zebra's slow, yeah. <laughs> I keep like looking between V and the merchant and trying to figure out whether or not I should, <laughs> should tell him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can I, can I see if I notice uh, Dewey having this look on? Yeah, that's, on I think that's fine. You notice Dewey having a moral conundrum, let's say, that you have <laughs> yeah, imposed I'm gonna, upon I'm gonna them. cast message straight into Dewey's brain and be like, look friend, in, when times are like this, we all must do what we must. Uh, I promise to put this to good use. Uh, while this is happening, since Manaya doesn't know magic is happening, uh, she's going to walk over to Dewey and say, uh, Dewey, was it? That man was much better well off. I don't think this will make much of a difference. It He'll be okay. Him. We're the better off. And we need to make up for the rations we lost. Don't we? The lawful goods good. justification of robbery. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I will say, I was personally hoping that it was rations when I took it, so that I could make it to Oka. Oh, you v. can't eat gems. <laughs> I know. I'm disappointed, like you are. <laughs> uh, yeah, and we're gonna end that scene on that note, uh, as the, as Stripe sort of waddles out of out of scene. You know, it's tail tail swishing. Uh, so you continue with your travels, right? And you enter the third week of your journey. Uh, and during during this third week, during day 22 of your travels, we're over the halfway point now, something happens. Uh, why don't the four of you decide and tell me what time of day it is when this thing happens? It's, it's flexible. You get to choose. Mid-morning? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. Okay, mid-morning. I was feeling mid-morning. mid-morning, too. Okay, and uh, why don't uh, Dewey... Why don't you roll a d100 for me to determine what the topic of your group's conversation is that becomes- Oh! Hydration station! Let's hydrate! I have a d100, but I don't want to go grab it right Thank now. Thank you, like... Okay, then I'll ask someone else to do it. Oka, roll a d100 for me, and this is going to determine the topic of your conversation that your group is talking about when this thing happens. I'd be rolling d100s today. Do it! Roll! Uh, 62. 62, let's see. Uh, you're venting. The four of you are venting w- to each other. Uh, so why don't we hear a little bit of a snippet, a snippet of that venting as you're walking mid-morning across the arid flats. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? Who would charge five silver for one pack of tobacco? That's fucking ridiculous. These, these fucking people think that, oh, just because we're in the middle of a goddamn disaster, there's still tobacco growing, okay? I know it. I see it everywhere. This is ridiculous. I can't believe I spent that much money. This is unbelievable. Scam artists. Every single one of them. <laughs> Look at, pointedly at me. <laughs> I know. I, 
I was looking at myself. <laughs> uh, so, okay, you're on, you're on this rant, right? It's mid-morning, let's say. It's maybe like 10 a.m. in the morning. Uh, the sunless sky beaming down dullessly, you know, dully, lifelessly upon you. Uh, when you, when the four of you encounter something unusual. Okay, you're just wrapping up your rant about tobacco prices being way too high. Uh, when when the, the four of you begin to pass by a, a shanty town, these are fairly common. This isn't the weird thing about it. You pass by a shanty town, which is you know similar to Ujad, but there are a few noticeable differences that make it stand out. First of all, the perimeter of this shanty town has been heavily reinforced. So instead of just sort of like a uh, simple like wooden fence or like a few stakes in the ground here and there, uh, you see you see spiked wire. Uh, and, you know, like like bricks that have been piled up, as well as signs that sort of say, keep out, in a bunch of different languages, plastered all around the perimeter perimeter of this shanty town. You also see the bodies of dead creatures speared on sharpened stakes. And with a jolt, the four of you actually recognize these monsters. They resemble the bipedal, fleshy, uh, tooth, toothy, you know, wow. chicken monsters that I described uh, that attacked you and the copper stewards in the butte. There are no fewer than seven or eight of them, just sort of like staked all around. Um, and the next unusual thing is, even though, you know, it's, it's 10 in the morning, right? But everyone in this shanty town seems to be outside of their tent and they're all congregated in front of the same person. A half elf man is sort of standing on top of a makeshift pulpit at the edge of the town on the inside of the fence though. So he's not outside, outside the fence. And uh, he's sort of shouting at the gathered uh, villagers who appear to be very angry at him for some reason. Uh, so as you're passing this, this is you know happening, happening close enough that you can see all these details, but so far that you can't really hear what he's saying. What do you do? Uh, Oka uh, is in the middle of talking about how fucked up it is that they only got one pack of tobacco for five silver uh, when they see the monsters and they let out a rather uncharacteristic squeal uh, of joy. Uh, and they like literally like break out into a sprint, like hands already digging into their like pack to like grab vials and stuff. And they're just absolutely checking the motherfuck out of the dead monsters. Okay. Okay. What about the rest of you? a very odd response from Oka. Um, Monster hunters. Not right. even once. Right. <laughs> uh, and I think, uh, you know, I start to note, B starts to notice the stuff, and uh, since Oka's already running up with joy to these chicken bodies, I'm just gonna stroll closer and see if I can understand what's going on. Okay. Manaya Dewey? Uh, I want to join the crowd at the... Okay. The back of the crowd. Sounds good. Uh, Manaya? Um, I'm also going to uh, get close enough, close to the crowd, um, and try to gauge whether or not people are going to get physical or violent, or if they're just shouting. Sounds good. Oka, roll investigation. V, also roll investigation on the chickens. Dewey, make a perception check, and Manaya also make a perception check. <gasps> Natural 20! Ooh. Yeah! That's the total amount uh, on that. That is a total of 24. Okay, wow. Uh, what about the rest of you? 13. 22. 20. 21. 21. And V? Uh, 13. Okay, uh, let's get to Oka first. So Oka, you go up to these chicken things that have been speared uh, on these stakes. Uh, and as you approach, yeah, they look they look pretty much identical to the ones you fought. They're, uh, it's pretty, mm -hmm. they look like the same species they belong to, but they all uh -huh. have, like, minor differences to sort of differentiate them as individuals, you know? Like, so, you know, one of them has, like, a slightly less saggy, saggy flesh, you know, another one's eyes are slightly bigger, you know, etc. Uh, but they all look pretty dead. There are, like, flies buzzing around them. They look like they've been dead mm -hmm. for maybe at least a few days. And, like, the smell... Are there any... Go ahead. Uh, are there any that aren't what we fought? Uh, no, they all seem to be no. similar to what you fought. Yeah, they all seem to be the same. Uh, some of them, okay. look, some of the corpses look fresher than the others. And you can sort of tell based on like the way this is set up, this is the, the villagers attempt to sort of like ward off more of these 
these monsters. Uh, and that's also uh, sort of what you get V with, with your role, though you can't really tell the difference between them. You're sort of hit by this wall of putrid decay smell, and it's kind of nasty. Uh, Dewey and Manaya, as the two of you approach the crowd, Manaya, yeah, they're starting to get kind of angry at this half-elf. And basically, you can, you can tell with your perception checks that this half-elf, the way they're dressed, they're not native to the, this shanty town. They don't belong. Um, and you can sort of hear, as you get closer, you could hear this elf saying, and Oka and V can hear this as well, because you're getting closer to, to the crowd as you're investigating these chicken bodies. You can hear this elf going, Are you unhappy with your body? Have you lost magic and wish to regain it? Are you dissatisfied with your weakness, your slowness, your frailty? Then wake up and transform! The eight will not help you! The old gods are gone! They are dead! And the true god rises from their ashes! All worship the chrysalis! Children of the chrysalis, arise! Uh, and as this person's uh, rant, a sermon, let's say, goes on, but now you can see the, the shantytown people getting angrier and angrier. Uh, and you hear someone go, you fucking blasphemous! Uh, and a, ro a rotten onion gets tossed at this uh, half-elf. But surprisingly enough, he very dexterously deflects it. Uh, and a tomato gets thrown at him and he deflects it as well. Which only seems to infuriate uh, the crowd more as more and more rotten vegetables begin to pelt at him. But with such dex- with a lot of dexterity, he just goes Pow, Pow, Pow. He's like de like that scene from The Matrix, Neo, who's just like dodging the blows. You know, he's like on this- it's like kind of- it's funny, but also kind of weird. Like this guy's moving very, very quickly to like deflect all, all the vegetables, but his- his nice- his robe is trying to get s splattered with- with the rotten- rotten vegetable filth at this point. What do the four of you do? You know, I can't believe I never thought of starting a cult for this potential scam. I love this guy. I should go talk to him. <laughs> okay, so V, you're gonna walk up to this dude? Sure. Okay, what about the rest of you? Uh... Mm -mm. <laughs> Oka's gonna watch tentatively from a, a greater distance than the others, I think. Okay. Dewey, Manaya? Back okay, do you hang back, Manaya? Uh, I don't think Manaya's ever experienced something like this before, so she's gonna stay out of it. Okay. She doesn't spend much time on land, and there aren't a whole lot of- there have never been a whole lot of heretical sure. street worshippers. Definitely. Or street sermon people. Yeah. Street so lay people. So As V walks past, uh -huh. or do we like grabs for her but like misses? <laughs> <He's> like, <"Well." laughs> V, you walk toward your destiny. Uh, as you approach this fence, uh, you see that this person, even though they're deflecting all these vegetables, they're, they're, the crowd is beginning to surge up to them, you know, it's like starting to be like, get the fuck out! Fuck out of here! You know, like, you fucking sacrilegious, you know, piece of shit! You know, they're like, you know, like telling this person to GTFO, essentially. And the half-elf goes, fine, fine, I know when I'm not wanted. I understand when the word of the chrysalis falls upon ignorant ears i shall take my leave and they like grab their makeshift pulpit and they hop the fence uh, they hop over the barbed wire which is quite impressive actually they sort of vault over it and they land right in front of you v uh, and as you get closer to this half of you can sort of see that he's a young a young man maybe in his like mid-20s uh he has a clean shaven face except for a soul patch uh and he sort of <laughs> sort of <laughs> He has this like curly, <laughs> curly black hair, and he, he has these like bright uh, red eyes. He goes, "Oh, hello, dear well, sister." A... Well, hello there, brother. Uh, we're having a rough day at the pulpit, and while we're talking, I want to cast detect thoughts. Okay, uh, so it just sort of works at the surface level, right? Uh, you can sort of hear his surface level thoughts immediately. He goes, "Oh, perhaps." Even if I'm spurned by the masses, perhaps if I can just reach one person, it will all be worth it. That's sort of what, what you're getting. Okay. Uh, I would like to push deeper, and I want to know, like, um... 
I'm looking for a memory of like when he decided to do this. Okay, so roll. He has to make a what save? Wisdom save? Uh, let's see. Against what? Wisdom save against um against a DC of eleven. Eleven. Uh, you plunge deeper, and it's like a needle uh plunging into the depths of someone's brain, almost like a lobotomy. And he sort of uh, reels backward as you suddenly get flashes uh, of his um. Uh, of his memory, you see him uh, shaking hands uh, with a priest, priest-like person, dressed in these like greenish robes uh, and wearing this mask that sort of looks like a butterfly, butterfly mask, and like the the robes are also styled to look like wings, almost a little. Uh, and you see from his perspective, you're looking up at this priest, he's sort of like shaking his hand and you can sort of tell that this man whose brain you're probing is, is lying prone on what appears to be some sort of hospital bed. You can also hear him go <laughs> like coughing, like he's sick. Uh, and then you flash again and you see this priest uh, put a finger on his forehead and then you sort of hear him go, Ugh, and he can sort of see his, his vision shake. And then the next uh, vision you get is him uh, standing up and looking at himself in the mirror. Uh, he looks sickly, but he's starting to look better. And then you flash again, he looks better in the mirror. And boom, you flash again, he looks completely healthy. And he sort of looks like so ecstatic and he hugs this priest with, with the, the butterfly mask on and then boom, uh, these images uh, disappear in front of your eyes. And the man stumbles backward. He goes, what? What, what did you do? I, it must have been the chrysalis. It must have, it must have connected us. For a moment, I could see inside your mind. It was unbelievable. I'd never experienced anything like that before. <laughs> who, who was that man in the, in the green robes? Okay, roll deception with uh, advantage, because I like that. And I'll also give you inspiration for that, because that was nice. Sweet. Um, you said investigation? Uh, sorry, a uh, deception. A uh, deception. Ten. Mm. That is still sufficient. Uh, he goes, <laughs> he goes, oh, you, are you also chosen? Have you, are you I, a sister? No. That, Ever s that man I, that you I, saw in my memories, that is a... <clears throat> A priest of the chrysalis who has blessed me, who has uh, removed my blood lung disease. Ever since I was a little boy, I've been plagued with this disease. I haven't been able to leave my bed, but this, these priests cured me. And now I travel the Badlands, spreading their message. Uh, clearly this was meant to be. And he, he sort of embraces you in a hug. Oh my god, I've been so sheltered from ever since all this stuff has happened that what weird things have been happening to me, I have no... You, this is so wonderful to meet someone else uh, who's found this path that I did not have words for until this very moment. Oh, sister, my my name is Balraj. Balraj Show. I, of course, as you know, I'm, I'm a child of the chrysalis. Have you not been inducted yet? No, I've I've been all alone for quite some time. Oh, then it is certainly the strings of fate pulling us together. Uh, and he sort of goes, you must come with me. You must come with me to Dabathati. I wish I could, but unfortunately, I, I'm on some, I cannot stop going where I'm going. I'm going to a very important uh, meeting of, uh, of my... It's a family reunion, essentially. Let's oh. we'll call this family reunion. It's it's hard to describe where I come from. Things are a little strange. Sister, but, sister, what is your name? Vida. You can call me Vida. Vida. Well, sister Vida. Uh, listen. I understand that this family reunion is important, but don't you understand? You don't need a family. You have a family with the chrysalis. We take care of each other. Listen to me, Vida. Is there something about your body that you're unsatisfied with. Perhaps you're a little clumsy. Perhaps you're a little weak. Perhaps, perhaps you, you had magic before, but I've lost it. Is there something you're unsatisfied with, Vida? You know, I've always, it's, it's, this is a personal thing, but I've always wished to just 
be brawny or like my my friend over there she's you know she's got muscles i've always wanted that uh, your you friend we, like if of we course. play together right now perhaps i could uh change well i i don't have the powers yet to bestow the blessings of the chrysalis but we can make you strong look at me my blood lung disease has been cured by the priest and i've been gifted with dexterity and agility as well due to my devout service to the chrysalis we can give you strength and he sort of raises his voice to address the rest of you uh oka dewey and Manaya. we can give you power we can give you magic we can give you whatever you want i what, what? I wait. I, I feel something strange happening to me right now. I, I feel, I feel so much. I feel stronger. I feel, and I'm gonna cast disguise self to just make myself like bigger, <laughs> like, um, just more okay. muscular. Okay. Okay. Uh, you 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 cast this illusion to make yourself get swole, and Balraj <laughs> takes a few steps back and goes, oh, "Holy chrysalis." Vida, Sister Vida, you must be a chosen one. You must be an ordained priest of the Chrysalis. You must come to Dabathati. You must be a prophet, and you don't even know it. The, the three of you should bow down and kowtow to Sister Vida. There is a prophet that walks among you. Sister Vida, it's yes, time to go. More, uh... Give me a dress. I will be there as soon as possible. I will. I just have one thing to take care of, and I will. I will sprint. The, I feel the chrysalis has given me the power to just sprint across and dock in just a few hours. I understand. You are a prophet, so you must do what the chrysalis commands you to. We are headquartered in Dabathati. <laughs> we and and uh, he he gives you an address. Uh, okay. He writes it down and hands you an address. He says, "Please, please come to us." We will welcome you with open arms. I knew I coming be. out here was the right move. Thank you, Chrysalis, for guiding my way. Um, and he sort of bows to you. He looks very looks looks at you like you're a prophet. Uh, he bows bows to Oka, Manaya, and Dewey as well, and says, "Keep, keep prophet, keep priest priestess Vida safe, safe for the Chrysalis." Uh-huh. You're in the presence of a divine, and you do not oh, even know it. And you're about to be in the presence of my fist if you don't move along. <laughs> Such angry words from a non-believer. But ashes to ashes, and we all fall down. Uh, and Balraj sort of picks up his uh, pulpit, uh, tucks it under his arm, and he leaves while bowing to you, V. Uh, we can take a break there. Does that sound good? Okay. Yes. Uh, we are going to roll roll the BRB screen. Uh, we'll be back in 10 minutes. And we're also going to roll some fan art. Fan art reel that we're excited to share. Uh, thank you so much for sticking by. We'll be back in 10. And we will see you. Peace. It's the cold light of the moon When I'm walking home It's the warm light through my window When I wake up alone the white lies when our friends ask what's going on. It's the white lies when I say we're just fucking in that song. Laughing in your room, writing.
Uh, hi, 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 hi. It's so great to see all of your beautiful non-faces in the chat again. Uh, let's get right back into uh, the groovy groove. I'm going to unpause Music Boy here so we can get some nice nice tunes going on. Uh, sing to me, my angel. Sing for me, my angel. Uh, great, wonderful. Uh, so you sort of uh, leave off from from the the cultist man the the child of the chrysalis as he called himself balraj uh v you have been invited to uh, the headquarters of the chrysalis in dabatati after meeting dr oluso hopefully question mark uh and it's been it's been 22 days right it's been 22 days since the four of you have set out uh on your travels to reach dr oluso uh and you begin to settle down for camp that night get to wind down uh why don't you tell me what your watch order is for that this particular night so oka has a two-person tent i don't know if anyone else has a tent but i imagine it's probably been two and two two sleeping two watching makes sense yeah okay so who are the two only, who are the two sleeping and who are the two watching mm-hmm. Honestly. <laughs> I'll watch. Okay. I would like to watch with Oka. Or yeah, with Manaya I mean, sorry. Okay. Uh Manaya and V. The two of you take watch that night. Where have you set up your camp? What are some like features nearby? Maybe like a cactus or like a rock? Probably a large rock. Large rock? So we large rocks. We can't get like completely surrounded. Great. Okay, so you have built your campsite up against the edge of a large protruding boulder. And the two of you are sort of swaddled in furs and coats as you sort of like nurse a low flame uh, that sort of wards wards off the darkness that it encompasses you from, from the starless night sky. Uh, the two of you make a perception check for me, please. Never had, never had to make a campfire for light. Strange to try to keep it so big. Three. That's a nat one. <laughs> uh, v, what did you get? Three. Remember, Great you have inspiration. You I'm have inspiration. I can use. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's time. Okay, that's better. Like inspiration. Okay. Uh, so, Manaya, what did you get? Uh, twenty-three. Twenty-three. Uh, v, are you going to re-roll or are you going to keep stick with my three? Then. Okay, you stick with your three. Uh, v, you don't notice anything at all. But then, Manaya, you notice something odd. Sort of like on the edges of your vision, the campfire light doesn't extend very far. But at this point, you're like, you've gotten used to looking into the darkness. Uh, And you sort of hear it before you sort of see the silhouette on the very fringe of your camp, maybe 20 feet away from where you are. Uh, You hear sort of like what sounds to be a person stumbling around in the dark. And you also hear sort of... uh, very dramatic music. You also, you also hear a noise, a noise of sort of like. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, assuming we have some sort of code, I'm going to motion to V uh, to stay put, uh, and Manaya is going to take out her axe quietly. Okay. Um, and approach. Okay. The sort of uh, slowly. Uh, so you're gonna let V know, like, silently that something's going on, you're gonna go check it out? Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you approach the direction where you hear the stumbling and the uh, 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 kind of noise. Uh, are you bringing a light source with you? Um, no. Well, our campfire, is it, like, made of logs or made of, like, longer sticks? Sticks and logs, let's say. There's Sticks and logs? A little bit of both. If there's a good sized stick, I might take it. Okay. Uh, let's say um, you're able to find a stick uh, that you, you you bring you bring with you and you sort of like hold it out in front of you. And as you mm-hmm. do, you walk toward this noise. You see suddenly, uh, let's say 10 feet in front of you, uh, you see a person. Suddenly they're in, in the light of the flame. Uh, it's a person. A human woman? You're not really sure? She's dr- She's naked. Uh, and she has this, like, dark, uh, g- green skin? Greenish skin? 
uh, but she she looks human maybe. Uh, she's sort of like stumbling back and forth, almost almost like she's drunk or there's something going on with her. She's like stumbling and she's like <coughs> making the noise and she has this like long scraggly uh, white whitish skin that turns red at the bottom. And it sort of it goes all the way down, sort of covers covers up her 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 bits, uh, and she's just sort of like stumbling back and forth. She looks um... a little little unstable. What do you do? Manaya is going to rush over, okay. uh, put her axe away with the torch in one hand, uh, okay. and sort of say, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! Here, come on! You've, you've, you've got this. Okay, as you can walk. Yeah. Okay, as soon as Please, you get uh, like walk, I don't know. Close to this woman, uh, she sort of looks up, and through like a gap in her long, stringy, scraggly hair, you see that her pupil is a slit, um, and she just lets out, "Stay away!" As soon as you get close, uh, she goes, "I can't." I can't control it, uh, and you see, you see her hair suddenly it turns into feathers, uh, and she lets out a lets out sort of like a scream as like her her body turns serpentine and the feathers turn into wings, and this is a coedal. Uh as she sort of her her tail whips out. Uh, and she lets out like a roar, uh, and then uh, we are going to enter accelerated combat, uh, which is a fun little, a fun little homebrew uh, combat system I have devised for fighting on the road when you don't want to do a whole combat scene, but you still want to run some combat. Uh, so first of all, the first phase is that we're establishing we're establishing that we are in accelerated combat. I've told you this is this is the situation. Um, second of all, there's no initiative order in accelerated combat. Uh, there are only three roles that each player gets to make, which I am calling fight, wound, and inspired roles. Um, so the fight role determines how well you fare in the fight, how much physical damage you do, how well you're able to restrain whatever creature you're fighting. Um, so why don't the four of you, this is sort of how the combat begins, why don't the four of you all roll your fight roll? This is rolled like a regular attack roll. And tell me what you get. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use inspiration now. Okay. Yeah, me too. Same. One of a personal inspiration here. Okay, so what, uh, so I'm gonna take away an inspiration star from C and from Erica. Uh, two from me, perhaps. You got okay. I'm gonna take two stars away from you. You now have no, no, n none. Uh, Anyone mind if I take a collective? <laughs> <laughs> wow! <laughs> My dice decided to go fuck. completely cold on me. Okay, you uh, can take a collective. Is everyone okay with that? Yeah. Well, you don't have to give sure. permission. You can just say you take a collective. Inspiration. Okay, I'm taking. All right, it. you're down to two. My uh, uh, do we add anything to yeah, this? Yeah, it's role? like a regular attack roll. So you decide if you want to rely, if you can keep both cast magic and use a weapon, you decide for this fight if you rely on your magic or your weapon. So I you can make a range, like a range spell casting attack yeah. for you, V. Okay. Yeah. So it would be 10. Okay, V, you got a 10. How about the rest of you? A 15 total. 15, not bad. Manaya? 17. Okay, uh, Dewey got a 17. Manaya? 16. 16, let's see. Okay. Great. Uh, so now, based on all the rolls you've gotten, Oka 15, V 10, Manaya 16, Dewey 17, that's pretty good. Pretty good scores all, all across the board. Uh, as this, let's say you, uh, Oka and Dewey, the two of you are awoken by the, the roaring of this beast. Uh, describe to me what you do next. Uh, Oka almost punches Dewey uh, because they're confused and they were just asleep. Uh, and then they basically tear down their own tent to run outside once they realize when they're like shaking Dewey by their like little pajama lapels, you know? Sure. Uh, <laughs> Dewey, Dewey, what do you do? Uh, be shaken, I guess. <laughs> you are be shaken. Uh, and you also leave the tent? I feel like I have no choice if it's being shaken down. So okay. Yes. Uh, you, 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 you. You stumble out of your tent, and V, what do you do? Uh, Manaya, you're right up on this creature as it transforms. Uh, but V, V, what are you doing? Um, I'm gonna just get scared and like shoot Ray of Frost out, in the, but I can't like see because sure. it's like out in the darkness. So I'm just like, Ooh. cool. So this is sort of like the scene of the the beginning of the battle, right? Uh, v, yeah. foo, and then like Oka and Dewey, you're tearing out of the tent. Manaya, you're maybe like 
recoiling from... Yeah, uh, I'm trying yeah. to bring her back to the campfire. Totally. You're sort of recoiling from this huge, like, winged serpent creature that sort of burst out of the skin of this woman. Uh, and uh, this this thing lets out a roar. It looks infuriated, or it looks like it's thrashing, like, like some sort of fury is gripping it, uh, and it descends upon your camp. And the fight begins and it is furious v you cast ray of frost this creature sort of twists and it shoots past its body sort of like twists into a spiral and the frost shoots right through the hole that it's making the spiral of its body and then it descends upon the camp and its its wings are flapping its jaws are snapping uh and why don't the four of you with your roles uh, d describe to me how the fight goes for you so as a reminder if you got anything like 15 and above that's pretty good if you get like 10 that's okay it's like average so why don't you describe to me your tactic your approach Approach to this fight based on your fight rolls. Anyone want to go first? Uh, Oka is going to use their Radiant Soul okay. uh, feature. Uh, it's going to, uh, a couple of freckles on their face are going to light up, as well as their eyes mm -hmm. uh, and uh, wings, mm -hmm. you know, big gray wings sprout from their back. Uh, and they're going to fly upward and try to, like, uh, distract. And like mm -hmm. pull, you know, pull, like distract it with flying, mm -hmm. uh, and it's gonna maybe call for Dewey to do a similar thing to like take to the air. You want me to what? <laughs> <laughs> I said get up here near the thing. No. Uh, as you refuse, Dewey, this thing whips around. Its its tail sort of destroys one of your tents it just sort of poof, like knocks it to the ground and it whips and it dives toward you dewey um but who who's jumping to dewey's rescue or dewey do you rescue yourself manaya manaya you dive to dewey's rescue and you as you lunge in front of this beast why don't we all make our wound rolls so this next roll determines how scrappy your character is during accelerated combat how much damage you take so poor or even average wound rolls can incur mild to severe injuries, which cause lasting consequences as penalties to skill checks, fight rolls, etc., conditions for the rest of your travel period or beyond. So why don't you all tell me how to do this? Basically, you choose whether you want to use your constitution or your dexterity score for your wound roll, and then you roll a saving throw that's appropriate to it. You get to choose. So whoever has it first, let me know if you're using inspiration also. I have an 18. Okay, V got an I also have an 18. Whoa, very nice. 17. Wow. Oh, 18, 17. 18, 17. Dewey? 19. Holy oh. shit, okay. Uh, that means all of you get a... So the lowest is 17, that's Dewey. That means you get a... Okay. Wait, sorry, that's Oka. You get a minor beating. You acquire a minor injury. Uh, 18, 18s... And 19, all of you, all of you get a minor beating and you acquire a minor injury. Very, like, negligible. Minor beating. That means you exchange blows. So let's say as this uh, creature is diving toward you, Dewey, a Manaya, you leap in front of Dewey and how do you protect, how do you protect him? Uh, with my, the hand, the handle of my battle axe, uh, sort of block it. Cool. Uh, you... And then just, like, push it off. Sounds good. You, you block... Uh, the the gaping jaw of this creature, and you uh, let's say like it's it's it lashes. It's very strong, and it seems to push. It pushes you back a few feet. You're like bracing against the ground, and then like it lets out like an acid spittle. It just sort of splashes you in the face, uh, and it, it sizzles at you a little bit. You're, it's not like a lot, you know, but it, it's it's a minor beating. You get beat up a little, uh, and as as it does, its tail whips out, uh, and it like slams into V, and its tail sort of knocks V sort of across the campsite, uh, V, but you're able to get up after you roll uh, and continue the fight. Uh, so finally, as, as the fight is beginning to reach a certain apex, a climax, why don't we all make our third roll, which is going to be the inspired roll. So this is up to you. Before you roll it, tell me what you're trying to do. So the inspired role is going to utilize, it, it's rolled like a, a skill check, and it's going to utilize an ability of your choice. You as the player have free reign over the intention and scope of the inspired role as long as it's not like outrageously unreasonable. So you can try to discern an enemy's true objectives, you know, you can try to like figure out what's going on, you can try to get, you know, into an advantageous position to try to negate some of your a bad wound or attack role or fight role. So why don't y'all think a little bit about what you want to use your inspired role for? Yes, Manaya. I had this plan from the beginning. Great. This this uh, monster used to be human, 
So my goal is to incapacitate it, but do not kill. Mm. Uh, so I'll be using like the blunt end, the blunt side of my axe to swing at its head, and probably use strength just hit it hard enough to knock it out, but not, not using sharp. Yeah, I- I'm gonna say that's uh, an act of restraint, which is gonna take some finesse, which is gonna be a dexterity check. Okay. Yeah. I will say that that is a acro, well, not acrobatics. I would say just a straight up dexterity check for Manaya, unless you can make an argument for using a different skill. I'm not aiming for any especially place. Like I'll aim like generally at the head. Okay. <laughs> um, but I'm mostly just kind of hitting it really hard. Okay. Um, which would be my argument for like athletics or strength. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll allow it. I'll allow you to roll athletics for your inspired role with the intention of uh, restraining it. What about the rest of you? Let's roll our inspired rolls together. So hold okay. off on rolling, but we know we're gonna roll, you're gonna roll athletics. Uh, Oka, Dewey, V? Um, I think I wanna be a bit more uh, acrobatic. I, I, you know, I get hit and I fly across the camp and I'm gonna do some backward rolls <laughs> and a backwards flip. And then I'm, I kinda, I think I'm gonna, as I'm running back into the fray, I, I see what Manai is probably doing. Uh, I think, like, to see the attempt to restrain. Mm-hmm. So I want to grab and just give, like, a real meek, shocking grasp, maybe, to, like, help with that. It. Yeah. Okay. So let's say that is another. Actually, you know what? I'm going to count that as another attack roll from both of you, because you're trying to do something that's attack oriented. So I'll let you just roll another attack roll for, for both okay. of you. Uh, whatever it would entail. Uh, what about you, Oka, and Dewey? Uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. I think Oka is going to try to break its wings. Uh, so, like, you know, like, coming from above and, like, trying to, you know, like, step or stab into, like, the base of the wing. Because okay. uh, they understand that much about flight, and it would be a lot easier to take care of this monster if it wasn't flying around. Okay, sounds uh, good. So maybe like a, a dex moment. A dexterity moment. Okay, why don't you make an acrobatics check for that then? Uh, and Dewey? Oh, wait. Uh, I want to try and restrain it somehow with my rope. Um, so we're all just trying to restrain it. Okay. Yeah, if I see what they're all doing, then... Uh, with, with your rope, you're going to try to like lasso it around the body of this creature? Yeah, I might try to like... <sighs> an arrow and like shoot over it because it's in the air something like that okay sounds good why don't you make a uh ranged ranged attack roll then with with your rope so why don't we all roll our inspired rolls together go see let's see how successful your plan is <gasps> nat 20 natural one do you want to use collective inspiration and that one's pretty yeah. bad yeah. okay all right you have one collective a- inspiration yeah, I- left 19 Okay. V got a 19. I'm using, I'm using an inspiration. Okay. Devin is using an inspiration. Oh! Okay. okay. I got a six. Dewey, are you going to use an inspiration? You have one. No. Okay. Dewey, use a six. I'm going to use another inspiration. Okay. Devin's going to use their last inspiration. Uh, I got an eight. Okay. You, you want to use the... my inspiration. Let's wait to see. V, what did you get? Oh, you got a 19. Uh, Oka, Manaya, you, Oka, you could dip into the cookie jar and re-roll that again. I mean, what do y'all think? Um, sure, yeah. I think it's worth it. Great. Okay. Do it. Come on, Dice, don't fuck me over here. There we go. Uh, Manaya, what did you get? 19. 19, nice. Also a 19. Oh, okay. 19, 19, 19, 6. Great. Uh, so this is sort of how it ends. Uh, Oka, V, Amanaya, the three of you lunge toward this creature, trying to res- restrain it in your own ways. Uh, v, you, you grab it and you cast Shocking Grasp, and tendrils of electricity crackle around it, and it momentarily becomes paralyzed, allowing Manaya to sort of bonk it repeatedly on the head <laughs> with the blunt end <laughs> of your axe. And while Oka, you dive toward its wings and you're trying to shred the wings, rip them off? Or break them? Uh, no, I'm just trying to like, uh, like, 
Ideally, I'm like slamming with my foot in the joint to like mm-hmm. crack just like it. right to crack it. Okay, uh, because this thing is like electrified, you're able to crack most of its wings off. Uh, Dewey, you fire the arrow. Pew! It just sort of misses. It like goes off to the side. It doesn't really do anything. Uh, but because the three of you, the majority of the party, rolled very well, your tactic is successful, and the battle ends with this creature subdued. Its wings sort of broken. It's sort of. Huffing, I want you to like think of that scene in Spirited Away where Haku has that curse inside of him and he's sort of thrashing around, but then he like gets, he like loses consciousness, and, but he's sort of like leaking blood. That's sort of what's happening with this creature. Its body is curled around the perimeter of your camp and it's sort of like twitching a little. And uh, now the battle is over and you have some time to do what you want. You can investigate what's going on with this creature. You can do any number of things. This creature seems subdued. Maybe teetering on the edge of consciousness. Okay. You know monsters. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna see what this is. Okay. Before before you anything. before you start, she was human before. She was human. She was human. Don't do anything too invasive. Oka lets go of the wing that they were holding on to. <laughs> it sort of plops to the floor, kind of misshapen. Oka, roll investigation with advantage, right? Because you're a blood hunter. There it goes. Uh, 13. Okay, 13. You know what this creature is. You have never encountered one before, but you have heard of them. Because they're pretty mm-hmm. famous. This is a coedal. It is sort of a desert-dwelling serpent creature. It's a, uh, a, a celestial, which means it's usually, it's typically, a coedals are emissaries of the gods. They're seen as divine creatures that are good. They are, they're one of the few creatures that exist on Endake that has an inherent alignment. This thing is inherently aligned to be good. Which is very odd that it, it seemed, uh, Manaya, you know based on your interaction with it, that it seemed to have lost control somehow, and, uh, uh, Oka, you know that in what Manaya was saying, this person, this thing used to be human. That's not exactly true. This is its true form, the winged serpent, but it often takes the disguise of a person. Yeah. Uh, which celestial emissary does the Coedal often serve? Um, they belong to all sorts of, all, all mm-hmm. eight of the gods, but based on the geography and based on certain markings on this thing's body, it seems to serve Yudabathi. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, you're only half right, Manaya. This this is actually its true form. It took the disguise of a human because it is an emissary of Udabathi, mm-hmm. or at least used to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Oka, as you're examining this creature, you notice something interesting. You, it was kind of hard to tell in the dark and you were fighting it, you know? But now that it's sort of restrained and the campfire's nearby, you can see it on its face. This sort of, um... There's sort of like a sickly pale, pale film on its scales. And from the wounds, from the blood that's leaking from its mouth and from like the beating it's taken, uh, this sort of sickly pale gold substance seems to be leaking from its wounds. That isn't blood. Is this... Is this familiar to me? Yes, this is extremely familiar. And perhaps your chest suddenly aches with a ghost pain. Uh, I get out some vials and take as many samples as I can. Okay. You harvest this corruption. She mentioned when I met her that she couldn't control it. Do these beings often lose control? <laughs> uh, Oka chuckles a little darkly. Uh, and they say, I imagine a lot more often now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say that most people would say that this is unholy, corrupted, sacrilege. What I hasn't see. been since the last few weeks? <laughs> well, you're one right. to talk, hmm? Mm-hmm. Miss Chrysalis, what did you I, call yourself? I'm a prophet. I'm, I'm all not. about making the prophet, so I am a prophet. Uh, it's exciting. 
<laughs> he just like trails off into the edge of the camp. Well, you are right. I imagine we might be running into a lot more of these. Do do we kill her? Uh, I can speak celestial. <laughs> okay. I forgot. I forgot about that. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Surprise. Uh, uh, I think so. Uh, Oka kind of like takes the samples. Uh, and as they do, they kind of like shift over to look at it in one of its eyes and they'll ask in celestial, uh, what happened to you? Uh, the creature's eye, which is sort of like coming in and out of focus, you know, uh, sort of fixes on you. And you sort of hear a voice in your head. The creature doesn't say out loud, but you hear a voice in your head, the sort of booming, very like divine, echoing voice, uh, very dignified that goes, I am the protector of these lands. I serve the three headed the just, the divine. But I cannot feel him anymore. And without him, I feel lost, weak, porous, influenceable. And the eye sort of like, the eyelid sort of flutters a little bit, uh, but the voice persists in your brain, Oka. And it says, I have roamed these desert lands for many, many, many years, longer than you can ever imagine, immortal. I felt something, uh, uh, a wave of rage overtake me. It felt foreign. It felt ancient. It felt like it had never been here, and it felt like it has always been here. This wave hit me, and I lost control. Your beating has restored me to some of my senses, but I fear I have become too dangerous for my own good. I fear I will lose control and hurt those I have sworn to protect. Kill me, Asimar. Put me out of my misery. Mm. Oka brings their sword down. Okay. And you kill right it. In its head. And you hear a sort of lingering voice in your head go, Thank you, child of Sen. And it vanishes. So uh, Oka doesn't say anything. Uh, they stand up. Uh, they flick their blade uh, to get some of the blood off. Uh, and they move off toward the tent again. Manaya wordlessly moves back to her post to keep watch. Um, okay, I don't, I don't know if any of you... Okay, uh, so as this creature dies, well, no, no, I don't think any of you would notice. Yeah, no, no, it just, okay, it just dies, yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> the players squint. Uh, how do you... Uh, <laughs> Can I roll perception? Into oh my god, DM? perception on the dungeon master. Can I roll insight? <laughs> on the dungeon master? Can I roll insight on the dungeon master? Um, if um. any... If it's even an option, we should all roll perception. I think you should all. It would have to take a really high roll to figure out whatever you're talking about. It wouldn't even be perception. It would be. I'm like trying to decide. Why don't all of you just roll Arcana for me? Yeah, as you're looking at this thing die. Unnatural uh, twenty. That's four. four? Manai doesn't mess with magic. She got a nine. Nine, okay. Gentleman's nine. Gentlewoman's nine. Do we? Got an eight. 
eight nine eight four okay y'all you don't pick up on anything the three of you uh, but v v uh, as you look at this thing and it's sort of like the life sort of fades from its scales right and it sort of fades from its wings and its eyes sort of drift shut and it dies um you're magical okay yeah you're a sorcerer yeah you're attuned to the weave around you and usually when a creature dies there's something that something happens in the weave it sort of seems to go slack around the creature right uh it goes slack but it also goes it's, the weave seems to, to to hum around this dead body in a way that you've never experienced before mm-hmm. it seems to buzz like the strings of the weave seem to buzz like guitar strings that are sort of strum and then let let go and it seems to vibrate and just like those guitar strings the vibration gets weaker and weaker and then it just it just is gone and it's kind of like a cold spot something about it you're not quite sure what it is but your intuition your sorceress intuition v is picking up on something cold and something wrong something that is just completely utterly wrong about the way this this creature has died. Yeah, and I'm... I think I'm actually going to tell everybody about this. Okay. Uh, I'm going to describe the feelings that I felt from this creature dying. Mm-hmm. But we're not even sure it's dead? Oh, it's it's dead. It's for sure dead. <laughs> you don't have to worry. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely dead. Yes. But something about the way it died is a very... V, the only words that really seem to suit what you have encountered is unnatural. Is unnatural. Yeah. Wrong. Wrong keeps coming back to you. I don't have words to describe it, friends, but is this... This is very strange, even to me, and I've seen a lot of strange things. I... It just feels like something is very, I'm very kind of concerned about how this feels. It's a horrible, yeah. horrible new world. Oh, hydrate guys. It's time yeah. to hydrate. And I'm a prophet in the new world. Manaya does not turn to V to say this, but because her head is down, but she says, the dead are dead, and the gone are gone. The manner in which they die matters not. Hmm. Okay. And on those somber words, perhaps you go back to rebuilding your camp and finishing the rest of the watch. It is five o'clock. We have taken a break of about, what, like 10 minutes? Which means mm-hmm. that we have been going, we have 10 minutes left, right? In the session, just about. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I just want to check in with y'all as players. How are we feeling? I have a little bit more planned for the travel, but I know we're also anxious to get to Dr. Oluso. I'd be okay with mm-hmm. just getting to Dr. Oluso and like expositioning the rest of the travel. Does that feel okay? Yeah. Or do folks feel like they want to do some more stuff? I think that feels good. I have a little bit more time in me left, I feel. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I'd like some time to get to Dr. Oluse and get some answers. You know? Mm-hmm. Feels good. Okay. Sounds good. Glad we had that talk. Uh, I just, I want to respect y'all's energy level and y'all's agency. Uh, okay, so the four of you travel the remaining weeks, perhaps with some somberness in your heart from this encounter with this Koedo, which is supposed to be a divine emissary, a good emissary instead of like a demon or a devil of the gods. Perhaps that's that lingers in your head, ruminates a little bit. And I think we have time to do maybe like one, you know, um, a, a, a scene between two pairs of players uh, that are that are significant before we reach Dr. Oluso. Uh, so I have also homebrewed this very fun... Uh, <laughs> Uh, what, what I'm calling relationship building mechanic for travel. Uh, so I'm loosely basing this mechanic off of the star-crossed tabletop RPG by Bully Pulpit Games. I want to give credit where credit's due. Uh, so I'm going to ask 
there for there to be two sets of players. So why don't the four of you just decide amongst yourselves who you want to be in a scene with? Pair off. I call V. <laughs> Great. Oka, <laughs> Dewey, Manaya, and V. Sounds good. Uh, so between the two of you, uh, I'm going to ask one of you to be what I'm going to call the roller, and the other one is going to be the initiator. The roller gets to decide what happens in the scene, and the initiator will initiate. So let's do Manaya and V first. Manaya and V, which one of you wants to be the roller, and which one of you wants to be the initiator? And also, o uh, Oka and Dewey, why don't the two of you also think and decide while this is happening? I'll be initiator. Okay. V will be the initiator, Manaya will be the roller. What about Oka and Dewey? I think I would come to Oka with questions. So you will be the initiator, and Oka will be the roller. Okay, so let's actually start with Dewey and Oka. So Oka, roll a d100. It's my third time rolling a d100 today. It's gonna be your fourth time, roll it twice. Ooh, 99! 99. Ooh, that's and a good it, number. And roll it one more time. Oh, oh. So many d100. I'm gonna give you two prompts, you get to choose between them. 60. Okay. Uh, 99 and 60, let's see. Okay, uh, Dewey, I'm gonna list out two prompts, and you as the initiator, you pick the prompt you prefer, and you will initiate a scene. And I will help you, like, set out, like, the details of the scene if you need help deciding what's going on, but overall it's gonna be a conversation between the two of you. Your prompts are 99, namesake, or 60, a common enemy. What do you pick? I'll go with the common enemy. Great. Your theme, the prompt for the two of you, is a common enemy. You can interpret this prompt as literally or as figuratively as you want. It can just be an inspiration or it can be the actual topic of discussion. Completely up to the two of you. Uh, so why don't we establish what's going on in this scene? So what, what time of day it is? Uh, Oka and Dewey, what feels like the appropriate time of day for this conversation to take place? You're talking about a common enemy. Nighttime watch? Nighttime watch. The two of you are up. Wonderful, you're at camp, um, and Manaya and V are asleep, so they can't interact in the scene or interfere. Wonderful. Uh, so you're winding down, it is day 30 of your travels. There are 10 days left until you reach Dr. Oluso's homestead. The night watch is long and weary, and the starless sky is wearing upon you, and the distant cries of animals and people grate upon your ears. And Dewey, you glance over at Oka, who's leaning against, uh, let's say, one of your swords that you've stuck into the ground uh, behind you. You're leaning against one of your swords. And Dewey, you say? So why do you hunt monsters? Uh, Oka, I think, is maybe a little surprised the Dewey speaks. I think we've been on night watch together and it's very quiet most of the time. Uh, uh, so they seem a little surprised and they like take a minute to think. Uh, AKA I'm gonna take a minute to think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Everyone has to have a line of work, right? So happen to be good with a sword. So happened, uh, you know, it's all history, right? I think uh, monsters are a good way to keep a pulse on reality. I guess that doesn't make any sense. I guess it's just the thing I understand the best. I don't understand monsters at all. I'll... It's easier to just deal with things that aren't, you know, alive for me. Hmm. Like what? Like your machines and stuff? Sure. Hmm. Have you ever, uh... Have any of those things ever, like, I don't know, have, has there ever been a machine monster? I don't know much about it. Depends on how you define monster, I guess. <laughs> like, 
maybe not containing life, but machines that do terrible things, for sure. I did engineer I, I did engineer my sword to kind of have sentience. It uh <laughs> when I was on my own I would have it keep watch kind of and scare off anything that, you know, tried to get me when I was sleeping. <laughs> but not quite a monster. So I, I suppose your sword would be a monster to any squirrel that wanted to eat your rations, right? Seems like we have bigger problems than squirrels nowadays, huh? I guess. Maybe we are both monster hunters then. That's or maybe. A lot. <laughs> or we could both make monsters, right? <laughs> so. You said that it's harder for you to deal with monsters that are alive. Why is that? I don't know. I guess monsters that are technical, like machine monsters, are... I understand machines, so, like, tech- I should know how to turn them into not monsters. But... Well... That hasn't been going so great. Never does. No. Once you put you monsters out, I guess they don't- I guess you can't take them back. You know, there's a saying. Uh, back in the mercenary brand I used to travel with called a monster hunter's retirement party the funeral yeah every yeah. monster hunter retires to the court of ravens unforgiving work but here we are no shortage of monsters You'd really would have thought that already we had enough monsters, and here we are. Here um, we are. And as you, the two of you sort of linger over that rather somber thought, the flames burn low. Wonderful. I love that. Why don't the two of you both take a point of inspiration for that? Much needed point of inspiration, I might say. Um, make sure that C's comes up on the overlay. There we go. Uh, and now we're going to go over to Manaya and V. So which one of you is the roller and which one of you is the initiator? I'm the initiator. Okay, so Manaya, why don't you roll two D100s for me, please? All right. D100 number one. <laughs> uh, 30. 30, okay. And... 39. 39. Okay. Uh, v, you choose between 30, which is close, quiet, and alone, and 39, which is an accident. <laughs> I think I already know where this is going. I'm going to go with 30. Close, Ooh. quiet, and alone. Uh, that's unusual. I'm going to give you a point of inspiration for that. Unusual decision. Uh, so why don't the two of you tell me where this is happening? What's going on when you have this close, quiet, and alone scene together? Uh, what time of day is it? Um, Are you on the road, at camp, yeah. off foraging? How about we're, uh, yeah, we're kind of maybe doing some foraging. It's kind of like maybe early day and we're like out alone. Before, before like, Oka and Dewey are up and about? Sure, yeah, let's say we're making like some breakfast or something. Like okay. we want to get, get stuff for some breakfast. Sounds good. The two of you are off foraging in, let's say, a tiny little copse of trees in the middle of the desert. Very, very small with some shrubs, a few like very bitter hard berries, and like a few like, you know, birds singing. It's like a little oasis. 
in the middle of the Badlands. Um, the two of you are off here. It's it's very early morning, let's say like 6 a.m. or so, and it's just the two of you rummaging through the underbrush, foraging. You have a moment of close, quiet, and alone. V, why don't you initiate? Hey, Manaya? Um, hmm? V is uncomfortable, but she lets out a sigh as she, like, stops kind of looking when she's, where she's looking. Look, I understand that no one trusts me. Look, I'm not an idiot. Uh, believe me, I can, I know how to read the room. Um, and I don't believe in the eight, and I know, but I do know that the stars disappearing is not good for any of us. Um, and whatever I have to do to survive... I'm going to do it. Uh, getting to Dr. Aluso is important to me, f to me, to all of us, and probably to all of Andaki. Um, look, I, I just want to let you know that uh, I have not trusted anyone for a very long time, longer than you've probably been alive or any of you have been alive. Uh, so I wanted you to know that I do trust you. Thank you, V. That means a lot. Although... <laughs> surviving... is but one piece of living. And... I understand that you elves live a long time. And... I would have hoped that maybe over the however many years you've lived you would have realized that genuine joy is the other essential facet to life. I know you get joy you get a good laugh out of pickpocketing or committing felons or whatever you do, but um, you don't I don't think that's your life calling. And maybe I'm too young, maybe I'm less experienced than you, maybe I don't know anything, but maybe this first step of trust is the first step in many steps. I have not felt the type of joy that you're describing for a very, very long time. And when I thought I found it, it was taken from me. That being said, I also have not felt any semblance of a community in a long time, and I feel I feel something like that, how I remember it could be with all of you. When you're out on sea, you learn how to trust people with your life rather quickly. Though you may not like them, though they may rub you the wrong way, or just be out to annoy you. You learn a base, instinctual level of trust. But it takes a real sailor to know that genuine connections are what you need to have a successful voyage. Cool. My captain, Lahahana, used to say this to us before every trip. She says, we are better for the conviction of our allies and draw inspiration from their example. What is weak alone may together grow stronger. Forgive me if I'm being too forward, but you seem like someone who has spent a long time alone. And I hope that we might continue to be stronger together. V is fighting back tears, and uh, she says, I would like that very much. That's wonderful. And I think we can end that scene there. 
as you gather <gasps> breakfast uh, to bring back to camp. Uh, that's that's really lovely. Thanks, thanks, guys. Uh, Heartfelt omelets for this morning. <laughs> Heartfelt omelets for the morning. We got our love omelets in here. <laughs> love omelets up in here. Uh, so... We got our found family omelets up in here. Uh, Stop calling me out. The, the, four... <laughs> the 40th day dawns. Thank God. Upon your party. Uh, yeah, you've been traveling for 40 days together now. Uh, and when you reach Dr. Hitsaguten Oluso's homestead, the light is fading from the sunless sky and darkness nips at your heels. On the horizon in front of you is the Euclid chasm, like a jagged wound in the flesh of the earth. The Euclid chasm looms over a dozen miles wide and hundreds of miles long, stretching from horizon to horizon in an unyielding tract of shadow, gulf, and rock. Overlooking the chasm built precariously on a rocky outcropping is a small cottage with wooden walls and a slanting roof made of glazed ceramic tile a low cement chimney coughs smoke into the darkening sky, and a small vegetable garden grows nearby, with a few chickens pecking at feed scattered across the soil. Regular Not chickens. Regular chickens. Yes, regular chickens. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? You know, last time I was here, I got so drunk that I fell, and I was falling, I swear to you, for three minutes before I realized what was happening and I had to, you know, do the thing where I can fly. And I was so fucking mad, I'll tell you. I was so mad, this asshole Yukari <laughs> pushed me in. I came up and I threatened to throw him down myself, but then Mercy, of course, you know, she was just... She demanded that I put him down, and then when I dropped him, I had to dive and, you know, the whole thing. Anyway. You're not drunk now, are you? No, I'm not, Dewey. We haven't found any time with alcohol in three days! Anyway, let's go. Oh. Uh, Were you gonna say something, uh, Benaya? Oh. <laughs> no, I... Okay, cool. Uh, the four of you walk up to this cottage. Uh, a, a rooster sort of box at you. Uh, as you get closer, very territorial rooster sort of scratches at the dirt. Uh, and then who's knocking on the door? I'm knocking on the door. Okay. I'm knocking on the door the first time. I'm knocking on the door this time. Sounds good. Uh, the four oh, of you, yeah. as you sort of, Manaya, you stride forward. And as you do, the four of you also behind Manaya uh, ascend this sort of low stone platform that the cottage is built on. To your right, you can sort of see an assortment of objects sort of crammed into this narrow porch. A bucket on a step stool, a basin, a small shelf populated with like dirty rags, cloths, soaps, scrubbers. And Manaya, you knock on the door. There's a brief moment of silence, uh, and then the door opens, just a crack, and you see a sliver of a face that belongs to a grung. Uh, and this this grung is, first of all, very small. Uh, she's barely three feet tall, and she is somehow wider than she is tall, with a very round, oh kind of orb-like body, bulging black eyes, a short snout, short limbs, uh, spade-like feet, and webbed toes. She's kind of like yellowish-brown in color, and a thin film of sand is adhering to her wet skin. She sort of squints at the four of you and says, Sorry, we are, we are not interested in joining Quiffalif. Please go away. Uh, Dr. Lucilo? Who are you? We're... Oh See you good. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's <laughs> I'm losing my mind! <laughs> Excuse me, what? Is Oka also responding like this? No, uh... <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> We are adventurers here on um, 
We're here to see the doctor. Uh, would that be you? Doctor Wushu? Yes. It could be me, it could not be me. I'm a business devil. Do you have with Doctor Wushu? Uh, well... How do we put this? We were told to come find you. We... Squeak! We were told you could help fix... Well... Everything that's been going on? Hmm. I'm not sure. I thought you were so a busy, busy man. I may or may not be able to help you. You peggy. You peggy on. Uh, and then the door opens all the way. And standing behind this grung is either the most beautiful man or the most handsome woman you've ever seen. Quite possibly both. Um... They have light brown skin and short, curly, blonde hair that's been cropped into a very neat bob. Uh, They also wear these round, sort of wire-rimmed glasses on the bridge of their nose, as well as a long, white lab coat, sort of stained with grease and dust. And their eyes are are a piercing blue. They're a human. Uh, they look like they're maybe in their late 30s, early 40s, so it's hard to pin down. They don't have any wrinkles. Uh, and they go, I'm sorry, please excuse my colleague, Squeak. Can I help you? We hit. Yes, I feel like please. a broken record. We're here to see the doctor, Alusalo? <laughs> Aluso? Uh, that would be me. Uh, why, why don't you pleasure. come in? Why, why don't you come in? It's a pleasure to meet you. Squeak, why don't you uh, put on some tea for our guests here? Uh, and the grung goes, Okay, Dr. Lucio, I think they're trying to sell us something. Especially that elf, I don't trust her. Uh, and Squeak sort of waddles, waddles over uh, deeper into the cottage. Uh, and as the four of you step inside, you see that the interior of this cottage is cozy. Uh, well cared for, very clean and tidy. Uh, but that's not what you notice first. Uh, what you notice first is that Dr. Oluso reads. There are books upon books upon books upon books crowding the dozens of shelves that line the walls all the way up to the ceiling and even on the ceiling. Like books are like suspended in like a, in, uh, in like cases, uh, you know, uh, and you see like a humble wooden ladder leaning against a corner that is presumably used to reach the books. Uh, do we? You in particular, you notice strange, delicate instruments covering every inch of available surface area that isn't already taken by a book. V, your eyes are drawn toward the various precious gemstones, jewelry, and fat golden medals uh, mounted in various display cases. Manaya, your eyes are drawn toward the placards set underneath these gems and jewels. In the languages you recognize, Uhan in common, you see that these precious artifacts seem ought to be gifts awarded to a Dr. Hitsaguten Oluso as thanks for various reasons, curing a disease, making a breakthrough in research, rescuing someone's daughter, etc. Um, and last but not least, Oka, your eyes are drawn to the various monster parts uh, encased in amber sort of on display in the cottage's various nooks and crannies. Um, and Dr. Oluso sort of gestures at a couch and some armchairs in the middle of the room and says, please uh, have a seat. Oka does not take a seat. They they go over to what, like to an amber case okay. uh, and they immediately like, press their nose up against it. You s- like, this is- <laughs> Go ahead. Is this, is this a Naga's tooth? Like, an adult one? Like, this looks ancient. How old is this? Oh, not that old, actually. Maybe 15 years ago? Good eye, that is a Naga fang. Caught it while I was up in Moreau's doing some climatology research. A celestial, though. Given the curve of the forefang? Is that right? Uh, it's a common misconception, but you do have a sharp eye. That's actually the fang of a dark naga. Uh, hmm. Fiendishly inclined. Please, I insist, you must be tired from your journey. Have a seat. I sit. Okay, do you sit? How about the rest of you? V? <laughs> v, uh, 
I was like, I don't, I, I want to sit. It's, I've had walked for so long. I've never walked so long in all my life. I'm going to, and like very performatively. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Down. <laughs> okay, uh, roll, roll performance oh my for God. sitting down. Uh, Manaya, do you also take a seat? Yes. Yes, she takes a seat. Okay. Uh, Oka, are you, are you still just staring at the monster parts? Yeah, but like with the, like, you know. Yeah. Kind of like leaning, maybe uh, like against the back of Manaya's chair or something like that. Sure. Uh, Dr. Oluso, she takes a flask out of her pocket, she drinks it, and she m- sort of moves over to where you are, Oka, and nods at the, the amber display and says, That there is actually the eye stalk of a beholder I subdued in Jukai many years ago. It was, in Jukai? It was plaguing a village, yes. <laughs> I've, I've been around the block a few times. I didn't know they would get so far west. Yeah, they're everywhere. They like to lair underground. They're probably even here. We just don't see them around because they prefer the darkness. So, ah, Squeak, there you are. Uh, and the grung comes out with a tray of uh, green tea and sets it uh, on the table. Sort of begins to pour each of you tea, but looks very suspiciously at the four of you. He says, Dr. Lelouch, I still don't think we can trust these four people. Uh, you just took four in the other day. Uh, look where that got you. And Dr. Lucy says, Yes, they got me comrades and friends. I'm inclined to trust those who knock on my door, who know where to look. Uh, and and then she sort of looks at the four of you, sits down in an armchair, takes a swig of her flask and says, how may I help you? We should end there, I think. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, we will end there. Thank you everyone so much for watching our stream. Uh, Our next episode, episode four is gonna come out in two weeks uh, on August, let's see, August 8th, Saturday, 3 p.m. CDT on Twitch, you know where to find us. Uh, If you have friends who are maybe curious about our live stream, but don't have time to rewatch past VODs, uh, link them to our recap document, which I'm going to trigger right now. Uh, It's a bit, dot ly slash trans recap very easy to remember we are going to also recap episode three as soon as possible just to sign off one last time my name is connie i am the gm and the executive producer of transplanar rpg uh, my pronouns are they he and she you can find me on twitter at by connie chong and on tumblr at d and daddy issues let's pass it to c my name's c i use they them pronouns uh, as well as any other gender neutral pronoun uh you can find me on tumblr at uh pi dash sharp or on twitter at pi sharp art Devin. My name is Devin Olson. I use they, them pronouns. You can't find me anywhere. I'm invisible. Perfect. Thank you, Devin. Uh, Erica. I'm Erica. You can she, her pronouns, and you can find me on any social media that probably uh, Erica New Girl. Great. And last but not least, Max. I am Max. I go by they, them pronouns. Uh, I play Dewey Quirk, and you can find me on Instagram and sometimes Tumblr at Starchmonger. Starchmonger. Wonderful URL. Uh, okay. Thank you so much for watching. We have our first ever official GM tip lecture next Saturday, August 1st at 3 p.m. CDT on Twitch. Uh, I'm pretty sure the topic of my lecture is going to be improv techniques, using improv techniques to improve your GMing, Uh, but it might change. But if that's something interesting to you, tune in uh, for next week and the week after that, tune in for episode four. Thank you so much for coming. We love you. Uh, Goodbye and join our Discord. Peace out.